I'm going to shoot through the roof at one, you know. <laughs> Blast off. We're going. Here we go. And you're on. Hi, everybody. It's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and I'm here with Natalie, and we have a wonderful live prepared for you this morning. Well, I'm not sure we're actually prepared, but we're here. <laughs> but we're here. We're here. Happy National Worldwide Quilting Month. Yep. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a big month, a lot of fun, a lot of fun things going on. Uh-huh. Um, go ahead and come on in here. We got a little bench up here. You know, the, we have a little studio audience out here for those of you who are in uh, live land. You know, it's, we got a little audience Yay. out here, and that makes it really fun for us. It's a lot, lot more, a lot of energy, it's, a lot of Yeah, fun. it's different and interesting. We love seeing all your smiling faces. We do, we do. I'm waiting for cold medicine. I think I'm getting what's coming around. Oh, no. I That's know. awful. I, my eyes, I'm like, please. It's time for your spring cold, huh? I, I don't know. Everybody's had one, and I haven't, and I've just Not been like, Not me. Yes. I'm good. All right, well, well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just a little breathing it's on you. me. <laughs> um, so uh, what do we want to talk about first? Well, we had a demo in the shop a couple of weeks ago on binding. And but so it we wasn't thought live. It wasn't live, but we thought we would revisit a little bit, answer any questions you may still have about binding. So, um, no, so we first, do not do it for you. That's, well, we for actually, you. that's <laughs> not entirely true. That's you can entirely. send your quilts into our machine quilting department and they will bind for a fee. Do you know that when Missouri Star first opened, we started quilting literally for years. I bound all the quilts myself. Every single one that came through, Every I Every customer quilt. And it wasn't until one Christmas, and I was just, and I'm fast. It had to have been you know. like 2016 or 17, maybe? Yeah, and I love, I'm fast and I love it, but um, I was getting be way behind. We were quilting more quilts, things were getting yeah. behind. And little Bernice and Dolores. She would spend her whole weekend binding for, <laughs> yeah. for customers. And little Bernice and Dolores came and said, can we help you? Now, these are two women who actually can hand stitch a quilt together, and it looks like it's been machine sewed. And Bernice says Their to me, Their stitches are can perfect. We, can I help you bind? Can I help you with the binding? You look so tired. <laughs> and I said, well, you'll have to pass a binding test first. <laughs> I don't know what she I was thinking. She was trying to be professional. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking because they literally sew quilts together by hand that look like they're machine sewed. And Bernice is like, okay, this is how I do it. And I just looked at that. I must have been so tired. I looked at it and I'm like, well, if you could make that a little bigger and a little messier, it'll look just like mine. You know? <laughs> terrible, terrible. But they, they helped me out so much. So much. Anyway, yeah. sorry, little story. Hey, no worries. Binding is one of my favorite parts. And it I is, think actually. that's because you taught me how to do it. And I, it's very relaxing. Well, and and the it. thing is, you know, for people who are like uh, dying over binding, it's like figure out which part it is you're dying over. Because once you do that part, you literally sit in front of the television and you don't have to watch the stuff your husband's watching. You just listen and so, you know, and let him watch whatever he wants. They're the or best football put, things. You can put headphones in and have a <laughs> no. story or a crime podcast going, yeah. something like that. Yeah, so figure out what part it is you don't like, and then just conquer that part. Because once you've conquered it, the binding is, you know, it becomes, it becomes a favorite fast. All right, so, let's, so let's talk about some of these. So I guess um, to get started, we typically use a two and a half inch wide strip for binding. And we do what's called a double fold. So you, you cut it and fold it once, and then you stitch it on your quilt and fold it again and hand stitch it down. So that's now, there, that's not a rule. Nope, There's not no rules. These about are it. just what we typically do. That's right. And so if you want to do um, smaller, or, you Go know, for wh it. whatever you want to do is fine. Binding. There's not rules around binding. People There's, think there are rules, mm, but there, There's like it's not, really. I wouldn't practice. say there are rules. It's like. Um, tips and tricks that make life easier, yeah. in my opinion. So well, if, you're, if you're sewing together two and a quarter or two and a half, however, however wide your binding is, that's how... Um, how much room you'll have to pull it around the side. How much room you need, yeah. So for me, um, especially as I've gotten older and my hands have gotten um, worse, the two and a half is great because you have a little bit more wiggle room. I don't use pins. I don't use the clips. I just find that they completely are a waste of time for me, but again, that is personal preference. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, you know, just... I well, mean, and, and that's also how much overlap you need when you're closing your ends. Mm -hmm. So how wide it is, so, that's how far you overlap it. Right, so if it's two and a quarter, you overlap by two and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, so let's see, what else? Sewing these together, we do do a bias seam, which isn't as scary as it sounds. You're just taking your two ends um, 
I have a mantra. And you're crisscrossing them like this. So we call it like the T, I think it's named the T method or something. T, oh, the plus, plus method. <laughs> it's a cross, it's a T, I don't know. Anyways, plus. So it just makes like a little plus sign. And then you're sewing diagonally from corner to corner to join these. And when it flips back, it creates a lot less bulk in the seam because the seam is at an angle instead of straight up and down on top of itself. And when you do it where they're butted together, you'll notice on your binding, it'll be like straight, boop, It straight, makes a little bulge. You know? And so uh, that's the reason we do it on the bias and we close it on the bias as well. Mm -hmm. And there are several um, good binding tutorials out there. And when I do, when I figure out another part of binding, I um, make a new video and I add an adjective. So there's like <laughs> the wonderful binding tutorial, the amazing binding tutorial, the ultimate <laughs> binding <laughs> tutorial. You know, I just keep adding right. an adjective on the end. Yep. <laughs> so... Anyway, so let's see. So also there's a, so this is just the regular binding and it's pulled around front to back. Now, if you're going to hand sew it down, you want to put it on the front and pull it around to the back. Uh -huh. And I just pull mine right over the edge of the stitching and I hand sew it down. Um, if you're going to do, uh, if you're going to do machine binding, then you want to put it on the back and you want to pull it around to the front because we want to see what's happening because we want our front to be the prettiest. So that's, um, that's what we do with, with uh, where we put it on hand or behind our back. Now, one of the things that I want to let you know, I had a question come in one time from somebody who said, um, uh, I can no longer bind with my hands. You know, what do I do? And one of the things that I've noticed is if I, as I've gotten older is that we don't stop doing things we love. We just figure out how to do them differently. You know, so maybe you can no longer hand bind, then maybe you machine bind. Maybe, maybe all those stitches, those 80 million stitches that are on our machines, and we use two of them, those 80 million stitches, maybe that's what you start putting on your binding and using. And it just, yeah. you know, it just is, is a, a life changer. You find a new trick. And so also, we also do have a wonderful tutorial on flange binding. And the flange yep. is fun because it's just made of two strips of fabric, two different sizes. One, one is one and three quarter. And you're going to cut all your one and three quarter pieces out, and you're going to sew those together, you know, uh, with end the plus to, method. End to end first, so you end have end. two really long strips. And then you're going to sew, cut another strip that's one and a half, just a little smaller. And again, you want you want your binding to total, you know, two and the a half inches. The width that you want it. Yeah, the width that you want. So just take two different cuts, and then you sew all those together. And once you get all those the two pieces together, then you're going to sew you're going to sew the two together. I said that wrong. I'm confused. No, you didn't. No? It's totally fine. So once you get all of, like all of your white pieces sewn together and all of your green, then you're going to sew those two together in one seam. You're going to iron it. And because one's longer, it's going to make this tiny little white peek through. Mm -hmm. And when you put that on the, on the back of your quilt, whoops, you put, the, you put your small color to the um, back and you pull it around and you will see, you'll see just the little bit of white so it looks that like, appears. It looks like this. And then you can stitch right on that white, you know, or in that little ditch. And, uh, and that's a great way to put binding on that makes it easy and quick. Yep, and it looks really cute on the front. Yeah. And there's a Do we have any questions coming in so far about binding? We have a lot of questions about <laughs> binding. We usually okay. always get questions about binding. All right. Uh, do you still bind your tutorial quilts? I yes. Do. You do. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And how would one bind an octagon edge? So octagon oh. is fine um, because uh, you can still it's still make... straight binding, still straight edge binding, mm -hmm. but you're going to have a little, a little fold underneath, um, you know, when you come to a corner. You're just going to have, it's not going to be a full 45, you know, it'll just be a little fold that's under there and, and a little bit of a tuck. And, um, and on, um, the, on... The whole idea, though, is essentially the same. So you're still going to get to that corner and then kind of yeah. fold it back on itself. So that it lines up on the corner. Right. The same and then as when you come around to the corner. front on the other that's side. That's a good question, though. Yeah. Now, if you do a scallop binding, you've got to have a 45. Bias. I'm, I'm sorry, bias fabric. And so... Uh, so to do that, the bias, if you've seen it like on a ruler, like right here, when they have lines like this, mm -hmm. that say 45, that's the bias. So when you're getting ready to cut your fabric, you're going to lay your ruler on there, and this bias is going to go on the edge. So you're going to turn your ruler. That's yeah. fine. You can you're leave it open, like that. Well, we can open it like this because yeah, you're, so you're going to want to open your whole piece. Cut a half a yard and open it up along. Oops. 
I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. There we go. And you're going to need a longer ruler, but we'll just pretend well, this, with this one. This will work for the idea. So you, you're going to lay that 45 along the bottom edge of your fabric, and then you cut the... <laughs> the so mm -hmm. bias just means that it's on the, the right. diagonal of the weave of your fabric. So it's... She it's said the that stretchy so well, side. didn't she? Yeah. The, yeah. It, the threads open up on that side, and it gives you the ability to go around curves yes. and to ease things in if you need to. So it's good and for that. And there are several helpful rulers out there. Like Susan Brown has one that's just a, it just is a two and a half inch strip, and it has, it has the bias it on it. And a, you just lay the, the end of it is already cut on the bias, mm -hmm. and you just cut, and it, it just works really great. And, um, and then true. you're going to sew them together. Your ends are already going to be on the 45. You'll sew the whole strip together. And when you get to that little curve, it doesn't matter how deep your scallops are, you just pull that as straight as you can get it and sew it straight across. Mm -hmm. And then when you let it go, it makes its own pleat. So I don't do any folding or pleating on, um, on a if scalloped edge at all. Yeah, if it's a curved edge with bias. Yeah. But octagon would just be like a little bit of a... Angle. Yeah, octagon is a little That's angle. That's a great question. We should so, do a, we could do a little demo and be more specific and go into more detail on that at some point. So I do have another one from Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris says that calculating binding is difficult for them. Do you have any tips on how to calculate binding? So calculating binding is 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 actually sounds tricky, but it's easier than it sounds. So you're just going to take the width and height of your quilt, and you want to go all the way around, right? So however, if your quilt is 60 by 70. You have 60 and 60 and 70 and 70. You add all of those together and that is the length that you need plus, I don't know what, like 18 inches or something so that they overlap and go around corners. I, I do it completely differently. So in my mind, because I'm not a it, math it's girl. It's the same though. It's the same. It's exactly the same. It's, it's just same. explained in a different way. Yeah, but I'm not a math girl. So what I do is I know that fabric is 45 inches wide right? Uh -huh. About-ish. Yes. And because 45 is a, an odd number, I choose 40 because, well, because I can because add 40. Well, because sometimes batik fabrics are 40 inches. Yeah. Any fabric can, fabric so, can be between 40 and 45. So everything is at so least 40. We always 40. just go with the lowest number because then so, you're sure to have enough. So then I know that if my quilt is 80, uh, 80 or anything uh, in between 40 and 80, I'm going to need two strips. Mm -hmm. So I do two, four, six, eight strips, right? Because two strips per side, you're going to have a little, little bit of extra. Eight yep. strips times the width you want is how much binding you need. Almost always it's about three quarters of a yard. It's yes. the same thing for border fabric. If you know, if your quilt is 80 by 60, whatever, it's two strips per side, two, four, six, eight, times the width of the border. So if your border is six inches, eight times six is 48. That's not even a yard and a half. So, uh, so it's, that's how you figure border yardage and mm -hmm. binding yardage. Is, that's how I do it. Yep. Just because Super I... Super simple. I don't have a pencil or a paper at hand to, or that many fingers or toes. Uh-huh. I just can't. You're totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else we got? You got a scrappy binding. I do have a binding with a little bit of scrappiness to it. I just think scrappy bindings are cute, so I mm -hmm. included that. Plus, I didn't have enough to go around the edge, so found something that would work. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. A lot of times I'll do a darker binding as a frame to frame it up, or I'll match mine to the border. You know, uh, it just yeah, depends on what look you're going for. Yeah. So questions and on this, binding, because we're about to fi finish up we, that We have a question part. here. Okay. Uh, I have a hard time when I'm putting the, I cut my binding and sew it on the bias, uh -huh. going around, but the very end. Yes. When you join them together. Yes. So there's a. So do you have any trouble joining your strips? No. Okay. So it's exactly the same as joining your strips. I have a strip that comes in this way, and I have a strip that comes in that way, and I sew corner to corner. And so when you're when you get your two ends to put on, I do the same thing. I on my top is always the piece that comes sideways. My bottom is always the piece that comes straight up. And if I don't have enough room to work with guess what I do? I rip it back so that I have more room. I did see somebody use Wonder Clips for that purpose, and I thought that might actually be helpful to me. <laughs> it might be helpful. Because then when you're, when you're getting ready to attach that, you can actually just clip it, clip it up and keep it tight so that yeah. you can stitch that side, but I don't know. Yeah, we can, uh, we can do that here if you want to see the... Um, how I do this. So the other the other trick, and this might that might be helpful, is when you're joining those two ends, 
you're overlapping them just by the width of the strip. But, you, but we always, mom will sew, she'll overlap them a little bit more so that it's a little tight. Mm -hmm. And I will cut mine just a tiny bit short, like the width of, of a thread so that you have that, um, you want your binding to sit flat on your quilt. And a lot of times the, if, you, if you measure it exactly, you might have a little too much binding. So if you just take it in a tiny bit, just cut a little bit short or um, as mom does, just over, overlap a little bit so you can see the edges come out from underneath each other. We don't have a... A seam ripper? Yeah, I was looking for a seam ripper. We or can, do you have, is one of your bindings, does it have a, a... I don't have an open end. We finished it on the last demo. Oh, okay. So what I'm thinking... <laughs> nope, it's nope. pretty tight. <laughs> all right. Scissors! That's all right. <laughs> Hang on. There's got to be something in one of these drawers. That's We're right. a sewing Basically. company. <laughs> Quilting company. There's... We have Scissors quilting exist. <laughs> there should be a seam ripper here. <laughs> Tools and templates. Here we go. I got one. My favorite seam ripper ever. So let's do it on, where's the open side? Oh, okay. Okay. So just, just, just clip a couple seam stitches right here. Can we do it like on this where you actually joining it? Or do you not? I was just going to add another piece of binding in here. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. So we're going to open this up so that you can see it okay. up close and personal. All we need is a little bit and then it will rip. <laughs> we're going to Jenny rip this. Don't try this at home. My mom taught me. <laughs> her mom taught her. Well, That's true. I did have a good teacher. All right. So we need, Do. I'm going to cut this open so that it's just like a regular binding on a, on and you're, a you got to cut some of it off too, because we don't have quite enough or we'll have too much. I mean, all right, here what we I'm go. saying. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. There you go. Okay, you come, you come over here because I've seen this a million times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add this next piece in, and I'm going to try to open it up. There we go. So this is our piece that we're adding in. And my quilt top, I would have had, for this part, I would have already had them all sewn together. Right. But this, we're going to add a piece in so we can show you how to close. So I always put one, one from the side, one from the top. That's my mantra, or from the bottom, that's my mantra. And I set all my binding strips in my lap. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think floor, this is- And I usually roll over them with my chair and then, no, I'm too. just kidding. <laughs> and, and our sewing machine is not on, so. Oh, we're not plugged in? Mm-mm, no. Hang on. I I'm think we pretend. are plugged in, it's just. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Sing us a song. Okay. <laughs> we are sewing, Do daily sewing. <laughs> okay. All right. So I've got those sewn on, and we're going to trim see off if this I can little. Find some scissors. This, I, I'll just use the seam or the. Hang on. We got here. I don't know if they work or not, but too slow. <laughs> we don't know if they work. They do. Good deal. All right. So then, what we're going to do is we're going to sew this onto our quilt on the front. Now, another little tip when you're getting ready to hand bind. No, let me, let me, I'm getting way, hang on. Let me just do this part first. So we're going to sew this along, and we're seeing that we're getting close to our, our secondary piece right here. The end. The end. It's oh. time to close the binding. That was like a miracle how that happened, by the magic of television. Wait, don't. Uh... So what I'm going to do is, actually, I'm just going to cut this off here so that I don't have this long tail. Mm -hmm. And then how Natalie does it, which I love, is she cuts a little piece off well, like I this. Even, even this will work. I just pick up a, a piece. And this becomes her measurement for oh. how, how long to overlap. So it's, it's here like this. Let me cut this off I a little I don't usually shirt. use that tiny of a piece, though. You know what? You can do this demonstration if you want, girl. Yeah, I, I feel like I should, actually. So maybe, okay, so by the width. So you fold it, you turn it crosswise so that the fold is sideways. Like, How is it to work with your mother every day? It's awesome. It's, it's so wonderful. good. I love it. We love it. <laughs> we actually do love it. We do. So I lay this across like that. And then... And then your piece should come to and that. And it should, yes. And I Point. think you cut it a little short, Mama. I did cut a little short, but I can make it work. <laughs> yes, she can. So yes. what we're going to do is we're going to lay this piece. The piece that comes down from the top yes. is still is the still same side piece. Uh -huh. And the piece that comes up from the bottom is still going to run straight up from, the, from my lap. Okay. I'm going to match this corner to corner on here, lay it on the edge and I'm gonna stitch corner to corner. Now, I am eyeballing this, but I also have my diagonal seam tape right there. Mm -hmm. 
So I put the point on there to make sure that's going to go. And we aim for that. And then when you pull it, it should lay nice and flat, just like that. Mm -hmm. And so, so I actually like mine this. Um, I like mine to be tight like this. I like my top binding to be a little tighter mm -hmm. than my quilt so that when I... Because otherwise, when you sew to it, it gets a little bubble down here. Mm -hmm. And then you have to rip it back and take this in just a hair. Okay. And so this way, you, it'll just lay down nice and flat. But you cut these off, too. And then yeah. you give these to people who make things with these tiny... No, you put them in the trash. I put them in the trash. But, some, but people make things. They, they're savers. Well, thank you for coming well, up here. Well, thank you. I, I hope that helps you. Yes, thank you. All right. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Any other binding questions? Binding questions? So Bonnie would like to know, uh, when binding, do you always pull to the front or to the back? Well, it to depends on yeah. what you want your quilt to look like. It, if you're doing a, a machine stitch, I would fold it forward to the front. If you're doing a hand binding, you're going to fold it to the back. And, and that's, that is a personal preference thing. There's some, some you know, typically... Machine binding is folded to the front and hand binding is folded to the back. But Those really are the only two preference. I've seen a lot things. of people bind on the front. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And speaking of hand binding, Catherine would like to know what is the best stitch to use oh. for hand binding? Do we have a needle? We use a stitch. Uh, Mom calls it ladder stitch. I'm not sure that's technically accurate, but, but almost always funny. when I think she's wrong, she's right. So <laughs> <laughs> this has been going Here, on since I've got, she was very young. I've got this. <laughs> Oh, it's already threaded? Already threaded, red All right. thread. So here's what I do. I pull mine around to the front like this. I'm sitting in my recliner, just you have to imagine. Sitting mm -hmm. in my recliner, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pull this around to the back, and I'm going to slide my needle in right here. It doesn't just have a knot in, the in it, just so you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> She's like, it doesn't have a knot in it. <laughs> There's no knot. It's going all the way through now. <laughs> All right, here we go. So oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cope, come be in between these two and come out the fold. So my knot is now firmly in the middle on the back of my binding. You'll and never it, see um, it again. And you won't see it. You got that, Jared? Yep. That's a beautiful, beautiful set in knot right there. Then I'm going to come to the edge of the fold right here. And I'm going to go in between, right where my, fa where, where my thread comes out, right where it comes out, I'm going to go in the right there and then in. come over you know, about a quarter of an inch. And then just right where my thread comes out, I go back in and I'm going in between the two fabrics and I keep my finger back here to feel if there's any, um, any thread running, you know, running across Yeah, if you've there. got your, your needle through all the and layers. And that's why, so if I had all these clips over here, it would just, it would get, it would in, just get in my way. But a lot of people love the clips and that's, and they, they spend a lot of time. What I find about that is there's a lot of people who like will clip up all their quilts to bind them but then they have piles of clipped up quilts and they kind of like the clipping part but they don't actually sew them you know so <laughs> that's just an observation <laughs> she's just noticed some piles of clipped quilts in yes. people's places yes and so I just like to sew mine on and then I take a pile of them home and I do them and you just go along like this and you sew and um, somebody gets a touchdown and you're like, good job, good job. You look up for Yay, a moment. Yay, go team. You know? I'm like, go Chiefs, go Chiefs. And, uh, and, and half, sometimes I'm like, what happened to the guy in NCIS? What happened to him? You know, that's the other thing we watch over and over, you know. Uh, so anyway, you just stitch along. And, and, but the key to remember is that where your thread comes out, that's where your stitch goes in and you just come over the next one. Yeah, I can draw it out if you want to see. So if, if this is your quilt edge and this is your binding that you're stitching down, your needle comes in and then it goes down in the same spot and across underneath like a little, it's a little diagonal. Then it comes up and goes down and across. So just, just make sure that like- Oops, I keep if, wanting to go straight over. If you are does sewing that, binding on- and Does that it, make sense? Can you see that? Who do I show? I'm, who wants to see it? Yeah, hold still. Just hold still. Perfect. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yep. So, so it, it's straight down and over, and straight down and over, and straight down and over. I'm pretty sure that's what I just did. Right I know. Here. I just... <laughs> <laughs> covering all the bases here. <laughs> all right. Any questions on I, that? I know you love me. I do love <laughs> 
So since we're talking hand binding, Leah would like to know, is there a right or a wrong needle to use for hand binding? No. So these are personal preferences as well. If your needle, if the, my needle gets too thick, it's too hard for my hands to push it through. And then yeah. people ask about thimbles. If we, we're the Band-Aid family. Mm -hmm. We just did never do the thimble thing. So we, I wear a Band-Aid on this finger because this happens to be my push finger. Because if I put a thimble on there, it does this. It sticks straight in the air and then I'm sewing like this. It's like it has a little hat on and it wants to show everybody. I don't know what the deal is with a thimble, but I can't seem to figure out how to use one. But yeah. I, so I just put a Band-Aid on. Layer, I layer two Band-Aids over the pushing finger and then any other finger that I happen to stick all the time, which is always my thumb, I Band-Aid that before I start so that I don't end up with a needle in, in my Cause thumb. Because she she'll hold her binding down like this and she'll stitch I toward it, her thumb. I hold it this way and stitch towards my thumb. And if you find that you're stitching something and it is like, it feel, it's just hard for you. You have a hard time, the needle, mm -hmm. flip your quilt around and go the other direction because it may not be normal. Maybe it's, maybe you're trying to maybe do it left-handed. Yeah. Maybe you're, you know. You know the I, other thing I've noticed is people hold their quilts differently. So some people will have their binding facing away outside. from them and do it this way and other people will hold it this way and flip it over. That's what I do. This is how, yeah, this is how I do it too because I learned from you that, you know, I mean, we just have similar habits because you taught me. That's right. But I have seen people do it the other way and I wonder if it's easier or more difficult. Yeah, well, just, just try it. Depends try it how and you figure it out, you know. If, if that's the part you don't like. Maybe then... it's how you were holding the quilt. Yeah. You it never know. It could be as simple as that. As that. Yeah. All right. Now for machine binding, is there a best stitch to use for that? And what foot should you use? Also no, and any foot you want, but we could suggest a walking foot to be professional. Well, <laughs> yeah, I never use ever, because I, I don't matter. know what it is. I've never, <laughs> never put a walking foot on my machine, <laughs> except to try walking foot quilting, which is really fun. The one we but do, I don't use it for anything else. The one we do at Missouri Star, I literally chose what, 10 years ago, and it's it's a like a serpentine zigzag, so it has a lot of stitches, but it goes back and forth, mm -hmm. and I figured it would cover all the binding we have, area. We have that right here on this and, quilt. Um, yeah, and we can show it on this quilt. If you guys can see. I'll hold still so you can find me. Because <laughs> asking well, which... Well, it's hard to see because the thread is um, close it's to the same It's white. Color. Well, it's white on this side. Oh, it's white on the back. Okay. Yeah. So can you guys see that? <laughs> In the binding, uh -huh. we haven't done that, but I do know people that that want their binding to be thick, and so they we, can. You can do that. If yeah, you and like. we sew ours on a hair over a quarter of an inch. It's become automatic for us yeah. to do that. So mostly our binding is Filled. full. Yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting that you should say that because I, I, you know, I'm a utilitarian quilter. I make quilts for people to love and use and wear out, and I have no desire to be judged or to judge them. And so I put my quilt in a show one time, and it was a people's choice, and judges, and, and one people's choice, it was just a log cabin, but, but it had, um, but I, there were judges that came through, and the note they left on there was that your binding is not full enough. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, I, at first I was like, how dare they? What are they thinking? You know, I mean, I wasn't, I, I wasn't anybody then. It was, she it was cried being, a little. I was like so surprised. It made me look at what I was doing, and then I realized that for me, that's not a deal. It's yeah. not a deal for me. And so, uh, so I didn't do it. This was before Missouri Star or anything, you know, and it, it, did kind of, I, it did kind of make me step back and take a look at it, mm -hmm. but I realized in the end that it, I, I, it, it, I just wasn't mm -hmm. that, uh, it wasn't a thing for me. So yeah. I didn't worry about it, and, um, and that lady is out of my will. So <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She was never in it, to be fair. She was never in it, to be fair. All right. So we, but, but the, the truth about that, though, is there, you can use any stitch you want. It can be straight. It could be, you know, a yeah. blanket stitch. It could be one of the zillion stitches that your machine does. They're all cool and interesting. And Now, one of the things, if you do want a, to machine bind a trick that I use, because I always, um, I, wanna, I tend to want to do this and stitch in this ditch so it doesn't look like I've machine bound it, but I've caught it on the back. Mm -hmm. So when you want, when you do that, you you have to. And ha it's you have, almost impossible it's to almost blind impossible. stitch from the front mm -hmm. and have it catch everywhere on the back. So here's what I do: I put a bead of glue all along this edge, mm -hmm. and I glue. turn it over here so that it is over the stitch line, and I iron it down. It just sticks. Might have had some of that. Like gold, and you just so. Oh, right this will work. Yeah. 
That'll so, work. Yeah, so we do we do glue stick. You can do Elmer's glue. You can do um, applique glue. Like I've done it right here. This is not bound. This is just glued on. Yeah, and you and can so then, take a look. And then also, you know, like if you're one who prefers the clips, this is... This is like the Insta Clip, and if right. it's water soluble glue, it washes it right washes out. It washes out when you when you wash and your quilt. So, so don't leave it forever and ever because it gets harder once it once this, it's dry. No, like I, for I don't a, think the water soluble does for a long, long time though. Like if you were talking years, <laughs> that sucker would be crusty. <laughs> <laughs> years. <laughs> I'm just talking. I just Can know. You imagine me not binding a quilt for years. No, not you. <laughs> not you. This is not advice for you, <laughs> dear. <laughs> All right. So do it just before you're ready to bind. How about yes. that? If, if you want you're going to bind, bind right away, and you want to, you want to machine bind it, and don't you want be heavy handed. Down, <laughs> go ahead and glue. Now, don't try not to get the glue on the very edge of the fold because that's where the needle goes through. And if you're going to come back later and hand bind it, um, you know, then you want to do that. But yeah. if you're machine binding it, you just have to make sure it crosses the stitch line because on the front you're going to stitch in that mm -hmm. stitch line right yep. there. Make sure it's like. What is it like? Maybe an eighth of an inch over, just a tiny, tiny yeah. bit. Just a, just a, just few, a hair. A few pieces of thread. A over. little tiny bit. All right. But yeah, glue is glue is a miracle worker. And also, there's a thing called um, steam. Steam a seam works, but it's mm -hmm. there's one just specifically for binding. I can't remember the name of the product, but that's essentially what it is, and it's just cut into like a quarter inch strip. So what were you saying about? Just the binding to make sure to that cover it the passes seam the stitch line on the back. Okay. Just to make oh, sure whatever that it seam you're trying to cover, yeah. you want it to go over the seam, not yeah. right to it, but over past it. Yeah, because you're going to stitch on that seam line. I I was over at the um, tour, so I, I was a few minutes late, and I don't know if you said this or not. When you sew your binding on and you're using your regular machine and no mm -hmm. walking foot, what stitch length do you use? Two and a half. Two and a half. Just the standard normal. stitch length. You yeah. Don't have to go you can make it smaller if you want to, but it hasn't. I sew big enough that I can rip things apart easily, but small enough that it holds. Well, and my together. hand stitches are going to be wider than that, so. Yeah, true. If it's going to hold on one side, it'll hold on the other. That's true. That's true. All right. It works. Any other binding questions? So after the quilt is squared, are there is there any other preparation needed before binding? Nope. Square your quilt. You got to make your binding, but we talked about that a little bit, so. And we have a comment as well that my binding corners aren't pretty. How can I make them prettier? Oh, there, so okay. there's, there's a lot of videos on that, and we can show you a corner. We, yeah, so basically you, you stitch to the edge, and then you flip your binding up and flip it back down on itself. You got it? You got I'm something? I'm just looking for there, the one. Use that one. Okay. Wait, why is this is a tiny piece? Never mind. I'm looking for the one that has the torn off, the torn off piece. We don't have one that's yes, open. Yes, I just sewed it. You, this is it. I didn't sew it all down though. Oh, there you go. Okay, so rip off to the corner. Oh, there you go. I see what. She, okay, I get. I get what you're. Where you're going. So the corners. <laughs> there are so many things I do where. where it's, it's funny like, how. It's funny like, how. Please it's don't like, ask her for advice. I'm like, I get the job done, all right, you know? Well, but the thing is, in, in a lot of people's minds, like, it's too precious to do that, you know? But we're working with two pieces of fabric. We do this all the time. It's just not that precious anymore. Like, it's fine. Rip it out. Do it again. It's okay. Well, because it's better to have it's it right, It's just right? fabric. <laughs> you know? So I, I, don't, uh, I don't stress over it. All right. So unfortunately, this one has, this one horrible, has, the, has is, the seam on it. Which, you should use this one. Yeah, but this... <laughs> but, but this is going to be your hardest one you'll ever have to do because it has the seam on it. It's, and it's just not annoying. Hard. Yeah. It's, it's really annoying. So basically, what you're going to do, all right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what, so this is backwards for me now because I come this way. So do you come the other way because you're right-handed? No. So I, don't I come think this so. way. I, I would go that way too. All right. Yeah. So we get here to the end and we stop at one quarter of an inch. I measure it every time. You I know never I measure do. it. I just no, I stop don't. I do whenever. Look at her. She's like, you really? You measure that every time? I'm no, like, we do not measure it every time. So we get here about, about a quarter of an inch, and we stop. And then we, we take, I take my thumb, and I pull this back so that it lines up even along the top. 
and then just sew straight down. That's all I do. You stick your thumb in it? Yeah, I just, I just do this, and then I pull it over with my thumb to make sure that it lines up right straight across the top I of it. Go, I go over to this point, which I need to pick that out because it's bugging me. Ah, it's like a knot. We got a, there you go. Got a crazy knot there. Okay, so I would come over to this edge, and then I flip it up yes. like this, mm -hmm. because then you can see... You can see that you have your, your mitered corner, your straight edge, and then this comes straight back down. And if these are straight, your corner will also be mitered a perfectly. A nice miter. That's a better way to do it. So that's, that is how I do it just because I'm always, I'm worried about messing it up and I'm always trying to, to do it right. Mom has a ton of experience and she can just stick it in and go and blah, blah, blah. And it's yeah. great every time which is awesome, <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure there's other people out there who can do that too. All right. I'm just not one of them. <laughs> no, but, that's, but she will be. I mean, she's only been sewing for 20... Hey, 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 <laughs> 30, wait, 30? Wait, you were 10 when I taught you. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's a long time, it's a long time. 34 years. Do you, know, do you know what I started? Anybody who's my age will remember this. So in the 80s, we had these like two foot tall muslin lop rabbits. Lop-eared rabbits. The lop-eared rabbits. In with the country on. blue, mm -hmm. floral. So I figured if I could teach them how to make those, they would learn every kind of sewing, from embroidery to clothing sewing to straight sewing, mm -hmm. anything they needed to sew. So all we my had, girls We had interfacings made a and set in armpits and... And Line. Natalie, so just like me, she was happy to learn it. Um, Sarah said, I hope I never have to do this again in my life. She owns the company. <laughs> she, she doesn't sew. She's but like, she, I'll <laughs> pay someone else to do that for yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, her kids bring Although me Although she is spending a lot of time sewing with she us is. lately. She's, finding, she's loving it. She's finding as, you know, because she knows how, but she's finding as she's, I think, gotten it a little older. She needs that piece in her life. Mm -hmm. And Hillary is so funny. So Hillary is like one of those kids where you give them this little bit of talent and they make it huge. So she like reset the rabbit's head seven times to see what she would look like with different expressions. The rabbit's looking off into the Rabbit here. Under. Rabbit there. The rabbit's rabbit angry. There. You know. The, the rabbit's, rabbit's hungry. <laughs> and I was just like, She oh literally re it like every day for a week. Oh my goodness. It she wanted hilarious. it to have expression. Yes. <laughs> it takes all we time. We love Hillary. Time. We love we her do. so much. All right. So Julie would like to know, what exactly is flange binding? Oh, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Flange binding is where you have your two pieces of fabric and a little bit of a, of a different color sticks out. So it creates a little flange. It's two size strips, one and three quarter, one and a half. You sew the strips together, then you sew the two strips together. And when you fold it, there a quarter of an inch will stick out. There's great videos it, on that. So Natalie has a wonderful series called... Binding final stitch. something final stitch, <laughs> Liz. What is the, we have a binding 101, mm -hmm. but we have a binding class too, don't we? I have a binding class, and then I've done binding on quilting 101 and probably on final stitch also. Yeah, I don't know. So there's lots they, I just of information do what they tell me. about binding, but I think we're kind of ready to move on. Can we I move think on? So. so if you want to be oh, creative with question. your flange binding, though, you can really shake up those measurements. <laughs> it just has to measure the width of the binding you want to use. So if you're looking for two and a half, your two strips can be, you know, one inch and one and a uh, yeah, well, I'm have gonna, to be, I'm gonna try it'd that. have to be bigger. I want to try that. Because yeah. you have, you lose a half an inch for your seam. So don't yeah. forget that part. But the strips just need to, to make two and a half once they're sewn together. Right. So one last question in regards to flange binding. Do bigger strips become tinier flange? The bigger strip is the part that shows when you flip it over. Yes. Yep. That's the part that will become the flange. Do, do you no, still have this? Yes, yes, that's true. Yes, yes. Because, so see here how we have that's right. the green strip is the small side. The white strip is the large one. When you fold them together, the white is the tiny part that shows. Mm -hmm. So right. when you flip your when you flip your flange over, the the big strip becomes the flange, and the um, the little strip is the part that just shows on the top. Yeah, so. that's right. Straight, square. That's right. Awesome. All right. Okay. So there are some quilt rescuers out there in the world. We brought a little a and, fun little uh, surprise and a topic that we're both kind of passionate about we do I guess love. we do love so um a lot of us find quilt tops and quilt blocks 
at antique stores, at the Goodwill, at somewhere. And this is where when you finish a quilt and you give it away, it may or may not be received the way you want it to, but it will outlive you by generations. So don't worry about the path that quilt is taking. Don't be mad if your son-in-law, you know, uses it to change the oil on the car and you never liked him anyway and now they're divorced <laughs> and he gave the quilt to the Goodwill because somebody's going to find it. It's going to live a new life in somebody else's house. So we also, we are quilt it's rescuers. totally okay if you're working on a project and you don't want to work on it anymore, bag it up and give it away. Yeah. It's okay. Because we'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. <laughs> someone will find it. Someone will find it. And so I wanted to show you. I was at a uh, um, uh, estate sale one time and a lady had literally made I have this stacks that you gave me recently. Of, um, you aren't supposed to show all these. Not, oh. I look like a hoarder. <laughs> You're not a hoarder. She gave these away to me. I did. I was like, she was cleaning out do you her. Love these? I, I do. So, and I'm not a hoarder either. So what? Uh, is it true though? I mean, let's think about it. No, I, okay, no. I have a few hoard spaces. I have a hoard garage in a basement corner. So on that story, I have, to tell, I have to just hoards. tell you just one funny story. There were these two men that came into town, and they were in their 70s, and they'd lost her mother, was who was in her 90s, and they said. They said, um, my mother was an avid quilter and she loved you. And we just wanted to know if you wanted her fabric, her leftover stuff. She lived in a little apartment out in Kidder. And, um, and so we're just gonna gather up. And I'm so like, the key words here are little, little, little apartment. apartment. <laughs> yes. So, we, so, we, uh, so I said, yes, we have a guild. We'll use it for all kinds of charity thing. That would be awesome. Bring it on. Three trailer loads later. <laughs> The, the poor men, they three. were sweating and carrying all these boxes and like. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, I thought you said she lived in a little apartment in Kidder. And he looks at me like this and he goes, please don't do this to your children. It was so sad. He and was just at, so broken down. He said, I looked at him and I said, I have an entire town of fabric. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've done it. Not sure we're going to be able to figure out the stash problem here, Jenny. Yeah, I'm not going to figure out the stash problem. So anyway, I'm at, this, I'm at this estate sale, and I buy a stack that's probably this tall of grandmother's flower mm -hmm. gardens, mm -hmm. you know? And so hand, all these hand-sewn piece from the 30s hexagons, these They're fabulous beautiful. little flowers. I know by the time I've got them home, I am never going to put this quilt together. Never. Yeah. There is no way that I can actually You're not going to pick it up and do it as it was hexagons. intended. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to do it as intended. So what I decided to do with it was I gave them a good start and a good press, and I actually mounted them like applique on a square and made, made this quilt right here. Well, actually, and I've I think made this about is, five of them. I think this is one of the most beautiful quilts. I love it. Isn't that a great idea? So think outside so the, the box with your squares. Yeah, you know? it's an opportunity to take that art and turn it into something different or, you know, you put your spin on it. Yes. You and so I knew that I could no longer, you know, because I, um, I English paper piece, but I can't do a whole quilt. I can only do one block because it hurts my hands too bad. And so... So uh, these, though, just, just really quick to put in a little more detail, she just takes strips of heat and bond mm -hmm. and adds them in a like few places scraps. on the back. Like, you don't have to heat and bond the whole thing, just a few to keep just it tacked little down. little pieces so that it tacks it down. And then she went with a little blanket stitch around the edges, just did a mm -hmm. machine applique, and they're beautiful. You, it looks great. And then so. I just machine stitched over the top because I know that if I machine quilt this, it will hold all those pieces down, mm -hmm. you know. And so it you gives. Didn't sew it together at the beginning, the blocks to get it. You just laid the each individual hexagon. Oh no no no! They were no, all together these as flowers. Hex, oh, okay. So it's like yeah. No. So like this this piece right here, for example. Okay. I don't want to add all the set in triangles to make the quilt, but we could heat and bond it and. Uh, machine, machine stitch, stitch over it. the top of it mm -hmm. and add a, a circle and you've got a beautiful Dresden quilt that's made from yeah. antique blocks. All right. There's so many things that can be done. It's so fun. <laughs> All right. So then, um, I, I, do you want to talk about your blocks? Do you want to talk about No, those? I just brought them to show because they're cool. Okay. Well, then you I, have quilts. <laughs> well, I have a couple of tops that I bought that were just tops, you know, and you see these tops and they're just like, you know, they've been hand sewed, so you They just... seem kind of sad when you find them at an antique store. Yeah, it's well, like, what is this pile of fabric? Well, oh, it's, it's like a whole quilt. This right here. So we oh. found, you find this, you know, and these are all 
but they're all different sizes. And what are you going to do? And lots of times they look really kind of badly done. Like they're, like look at, oh, they're so. Be careful now. I know, but seriously, there's so many pleats and tucks and it's stretchy and you think it'll never lay flat. And, and that's probably why they didn't get put together in the first place. And that's okay. So this is another thing I wanted to bring out to you. Some of you are going to find a box, a bag, something. It's the of most your amazing treasure. Most amazing treasure ever. It's Just proud. think about the projects that you don't finish and why you don't finish them. There's a reason she didn't finish that either. She probably didn't like it. It at all. drove her and nuts. And she put it in a bag under her bed. And you think you found a treasure, and you found her nightmare, really, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, look at all these. Yeah. Grandma, I wonder why she never finished those. Uh -huh. Well, you have a bag of something you've never finished, I promise, you know. But these kind of things, what I do with these is I try to find a fabric that is close to or completely different from this, and I will border each block and what I call float it. So then I can cut it and square it to a size so I can put all mm -hmm. those blocks together and they'll fit together. So I kind of did that here. Um, I had a bunch of these. You know, you'll lose your points a little bit, but still, in the end, it's going to make something. You know, And you it put is a, okay to go ahead and square them on if it. you want to. You know, and you can sew it all the way around it and then and then put a, you know, whatever size ruler it is on it. I you have I like a, a row oh, here. Yeah, so I have I have like a little row She's here. She's still working on this one. But, you know, it uh, it's um, a lot of starch, you know, um, yeah. to make them lay nice and flat. But literally, you can make them the right size. If they're size super by, thin, by, you can stabilize them with like a t-shirt stabilizer. You could do that. Yeah, you know, there's, so, there really are, there's a lot of, of ways to preserve and use these, you know. And I will buy these blocks because I, you know, my magic is shortcuts. So I buy these so blocks she's and looking go, at it thinking, how can I make oh this in my an gosh. easy way? I could do this. If I cut this this way, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I, I instantly in my head, I know how I can teach this to make it really easy. So um, people, people send me old blocks. I find old blocks. I love them because right away they're kind of a fun challenge. So this is, a, um, this is a quilt top that I found, and it was just the top, and I love churn dashes, so I bought the top, and I machine quilted it, and I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you machine quilt a, an old top. And look how fun that is. And it's so darling. And it doesn't, so historically, it, you know, people come to me and say, what do I do with this old quilt? And I'm like, it just depends. If, do you want to leave it in a box forever? Do you want to use it? Do you want to display it? Do you want to have it out? Because this has given it new life for 100 years, you know, by doing this. Is it the historically correct thing to do? Probably, Probably not. not. But I'm utilitarian, remember? I want to use my stuff. And so, so this makes it usable and wearable. Now, if one of these had worn out fabric right here, if the fabric was worn out and gone, I would never cut that block apart. Don't ever cut, your thread is your integrity of the block. That's what keeps everything together. I would find a piece of fabric that's close and I would applique it over it. Mm -hmm. So just stitch it over the top to fix that if you have a little hole. Or the and dog you can use that same whatever. stitch that you use for hand binding. The yes, one that, where you just go, it's stitch. very invisible. I, I have a piece right here I just noticed if you want to show that. Oh yeah, that's great. This is the quilt, mom, mom had so many antique quilt tops she finished them and gave them to us for Christmas actually actually that's because, what all quilters should do for their children just kidding because because <laughs> Jokes, we don't, guys. <laughs> because we don't in our family have any old quilts I thought it would be really fun to give each of my children an old quilt and it's like when you put those things out in the universe it, it they come to you they come to you and quilts came to me and Natalie's first template was this tumbler mm -hmm. And so I this this quilt came and it came in strips, you know, just pieces and pieces put together. Oh, so, for real? I thought this top was oh, no, no, no. already oh, assembled. No, 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 no. I didn't know this. No, so it, they came in baggies, and I did one for each of the kids, and um, and it, each one of them represented had something to do with what you know. Yeah, about something them. we loved, something that reminded you of. Yeah, a, a, and so us. Uh, no, they came in baggies, pieces, and that. But this one okay. right here, you'll notice, it has a little hole in it, and somebody had already mended that. Yeah, and put a little piece behind it and hand stitched around it, and uh, I, I love it. And I love this that. This has a little seam in it. Well, yeah. So this is my favorite right here. This woman, this woman is so thrifty that she seamed three pieces together so she to could make her tumbler. And I love that. I love knowing about the, her. 
how thrifty Bits she was. Bits and pieces you know. of life. People say like, oh, my piece isn't big enough for this. This one has a <laughs> Mine seam. might have four seams on it, but it's going to be big enough, you know. <laughs> I'm going to figure that out. You can't always, you mostly can't see them. Oh, we should probably hold this whole thing up so they can see it. Well, sure. I love this quilt. Whoops. Oh, you're going for go. the back, huh? There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that great? I love it. Nice old fabrics, and then they've been put and to And she use. labeled it. I did? You did. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> to Natalie, Christmas 2012, Northwest Missouri, circa 1890, 1899. Quilted nice. and finished by Ron and Jenny Dome. Nice. So this was a fun one, um, and I brought it. Mostly, I loved the, this was just the top, and I loved the, um, the, the uh, Dresden edge. border so yeah. much. Because normally what I would do, if I found an old quilt, I would cut that straight off and just bite it. But I liked the border on this. And I liked that it was a little Dresden. So I literally did um, binding that was um, bias and just made it. But the cool thing about this quilt is, I, I want to show you right here. I learned something um, ab about it from Dakota. Where it is I right think here. It's, it's really cool. We kind of learned something f about with every quilt we find. Yeah. You know, everything that you rescue. We do, because we want to find out about There's it. some kind of information where you're, you think, oh, I've never seen that before. This is really cool. So see how this has this extra piece of muslin across the top? Mm -hmm. That is for men, when you sleep with a man with a beard. It's called the beard strip, because the hair on their beard wears the fabric out. Or maybe their skin is Probably oily or oil. whatever, and they and and it's called a beard strip. Isn't that interesting? Uh -huh. And so, because I found several quilts, and I was like, this one was hanging over in the museum for a while, and I said to Dakota, "Why do you think they put them like that? Why did that? Did you think their bed?" Was what I want to know though is why border on the outside of it? Why not just like this? Because so this is do. pretty, but maybe I maybe she made him tuck it under. I and don't then know. put it under him, and then she tucked him in really tight, like, don't move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But I, I often do um, borders only on three sides of my quilts, because across the top, you know, it's already long enough. You've got pillows covering and, it yeah, anyways. I don't do a border on my fourth side. It saves a little fabric, and I'm, it's going to be on my bed, so it's, like, not a deal. Good folding. I like that. All right. That. Good folding. <laughs> All right. Sometimes, um, when we first started at Missouri Star, um, we were part of, I, I did a, we did a thing where we put a sign up that said, anybody who wants to come and sew, come and sew on Friday night. We're going to have open sew. And they brought mending, and they brought knitting, and they brought, and I didn't care because they came. And I, every, it was so fun to socialize. It's just so fun to be part of a, of a social group of, of people, like-minded people. And that, you know, the first couple of weeks was great, and then um, there were too many, so we had to... Ron had to, he threw down a piece of carpet in the next part of the building because we only finished one room for our little machine. And, you know, and that very night we filled up that room and I said, Ron, you need to make another room, you know. But the, it got big enough that we did some challenges. So we put everybody's like name in a, in, a, in a box and let them pick a color and a block and whosoever name drew, we drew out, everybody would make them a block. So they would get, And then we'd you know, come back the next month with our finished blocks. It was kind of a block lotto mm -hmm. type of thing. And then that person would get all the blocks. So when it came my turn, I chose blue, which you all know there's more than one shade of. <laughs> and I chose um, the Missouri Star. And so um, I, I got back blocks that were all, all different, fabrics. different shades of blue. I had no idea how they were going to go together. Some were country blue, some were aqua blue, some were... I couldn't imagine. And so we were going through my bins one time, and I said to Natalie... I'm just not sure I'm ever going to be able to put these together or ever use them. And Natalie said, okay. Well, yeah. And then she took the bag, unbeknownst yeah. to me. Uh, you know, I didn't know. So then, tell this part. So then. So then. <laughs> we were doing a, uh, a triple play on the Missouri Star block on, on video. And I thought that it would be really cool to take mom's old blocks and make them into a quilt for her. And so I took all the blocks and framed them and put them and inside then another inside block. another star. So it's a... And so then they presented it to me on the video. I literally bawled right on there. So I just want to show you how cool this is because she made a block 
she put the the blocks inside the other blocks. So each block is framed because none of them were the same size. And do you see, these are all the original blocks in the middles. See how different they all are? And I couldn't see them together at all. And yet, um, Natalie could see that if she, if she used the same fabric to border all of them, then yeah, they become, then they were. Yeah, you just got to pick a few work. things to unify. I gave birth to her. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Missouri Star and a Missouri Star. It's called Seeing Double. It's called Seeing Double, yeah. And you, you yeah, won't fun. get the pattern to make all these different blocks. You will get the pattern to make one that's consistent throughout. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like they're, they're, they're the right size in the pattern. Yeah. But when you think about that, so you, you, know, can, if you measure your block, and you're, you know, then you figure out, maybe you want to put star legs around it, which takes two blocks. So that is, you know, if you need, if you need eight inches, you know, or eight and a half, it's four and a half and four and a half. You just There are so many blocks that you put together that have a center square something that is being surrounded, whether it's square in a square or the um, blocks with star legs, uh, nine, anything that's a nine patch, it has a square in the middle, right? So you can put anything in the middle and then make all of your other stuff fit it. And that's how you can make those random orphan blocks turn into something amazing. You can also just sew them all together and that's cool too. You can, absolutely. <laughs> Crumbs and scraps and everything but the kitchen sink quilts are some of my favorites, I love them. All right, we got a few more things. Do you want to do this one? No, it's just what I found at a shop. Well, show it. Let's show okay. it. Okay. So this is a um, an apple core apple quilt. quilt. And this quilt top was already completely finished. I just quilted it and bound it. I didn't even add a border. It was all the done. The borders were were on here the way they are. And it's it's interesting because this border, I don't actually know how she did it because I feel like this would be the most difficult way imaginable to add a border to a curved apple core, but she it is almost, it's it. applique like on top on of top. the fabric. Oh, and then so, added two more borders. Yeah, so it's really cool. And, and it's it interesting. And it has a cowboy. Of course it does, why wouldn't it? <laughs> it's just And a fun. koi fish. It's just fun. Yeah. So I, I just, this was my first, uh, my first quilt top rescue and finish. Oh, <laughs> and I love it. It's a very long, odd shape, well, it, but I don't even care. And to me, it completely honors that quilter, yeah. you know? I mean, you've taken what she started mm -hmm. and um, you've been able to give it life and, and finish it up. And obviously, because I know you're the one who backed this and quilted it, you've mm -hmm. used this because it's been washed. And so it's yeah. been loved and part of your home life oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, I use this regularly. All righty. Because so, I love it. And I'm not, I'm not really worried about, you know, anything... I don't know. We don't stress over I the fact that I don't want to stress too is, much about it. It's not in the 1700s. You know, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, if there well, were things, okay, if we right. thought we found a treasure like so that, we would be careful. We with grew it. up with the mom who served us dinner on China if she wanted to make it a party. We never kept everything in cupboards forever and didn't touch it. We had, we used the things that we loved. Yeah. So that do. that's just a thing in our in our lives. We had. Uh, because if it's not being used, it really isn't being loved. Yeah, it isn't being loved. It's That's not true. serving. It's like it's not rising to its full potential. There we go. <laughs> Can I just say again that I gave birth to her? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. This, this, it's amazing. All right, so just a few of these little blocks we can pull out. Oh, you've got these the, are just yeah. This is just a Dresdens. fun, okay. fun Dresden pile. Yeah. So I literally, I have a couple of these that are cut up from a quilt that was. I don't rem this was know a anything about it. This was a top and it was a, a cutter. But yes, yeah, so I have a friend, Courtney, who is very talented and she will take the old cutter quilts and make them into tiny little, little pin cushions. The cutest little, little picture things. frames, you know. Oh, she'll just frame a little piece of it uh -huh. and you have this little piece of, of whatever. I, um, yesterday we did a thing on the folio. Oh, with Amy? Yeah, with Amy Berrickman and she uses old quilt blocks to make these, it, we use a hexagon and it's like a needle keeper for your thread. It's like a take along mm. sewing kit. She uses them for jewelry, all kinds of things. And That's it's so called cute. the Quilt and Go Folio, but I love the ones where she's used an old block and just yes. set it just right, mm -hmm. you know, and put it in there. It makes it very, very fun. I came across a, a girl online who does, um, she just makes all kinds of things. She makes little stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. She makes drawstring bags. She makes um, Christmas stockings. 
Yeah, uh, it's baby really bibs. Cute. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of talk in the industry about um, using quilts to make clothing. There's a lot of people who are completely against it and completely for it. My feeling is if that quilt is in such a shape that it's to, headed to a landfill, I'd rather have it made into something Make it into useful. a coat. <laughs> make it into something useful. Do something with it so that it can continue to have yeah. life and be loved. Yeah. But if it's museum quality, don't rip it off the wall and make a coat out of it because that is that you know, a little feel, bit destructive. It feels feel destructive. Bit, yeah, it does feel a little bit rough. All right. But so, also it's yours. Do whatever you want with it. <laughs> all right. So on that note, I am a fan of saving all my scraps. Mm -hmm. And I save them and I sew them together. Uh, so a lot. Of, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, do I still uh, sew for myself? Well, I do every morning. Um, I take time to just relax and play and I sew probably um, an hour and then I give my time to Missouri Star. But I do something I love. So I make little tiny houses. I make the little birds. I make crumb quilts and, and wonky stars and wonky stars and so and I just figured out a really cool wonky star pattern that I'm going to make into a it's tutorial. It's awesome. So um, so anyway, I sew them together in little pieces and then Natalie would say, "Mom, this piece is too big." So I would cut, just cut it and turn it, flip it around. I only and sew said it again. that once when you very, very, but very, it was very first good started. Is very good advice. I've never said that to her since. So I will make one of these. There's lots of things that I only say once. <laughs> And then I never say them That's again. True. That is true. That is true. So then I will, I will get these pieces, and it's a wild piece of cloth, and then I will put a 10-inch ruler on it and cut a 10-inch square, put this in a baggie, and all the pieces I cut off, I then sew together to make another block. It doesn't matter if there's a seam on a seam. It doesn't matter to me. I sew them together. So I made this quilt right here, and this is my crumb quilt. I love it. It looks like it would be really hard. Isn't that so fun? And I've seen them where they're color specific, like all oranges and yellows or all greens and blues. And, but to me, this is a history of my life work. You know, mm -hmm. this, is, this is something that represents the, the little, all the little it's things. It's like an I spy quilt I've for used. mom. Yeah. She sits and she's like, oh, I remember making that quilt. Yes. Oh, do you guys remember the? Yeah, it's so. It's, so it's she been... has Halloween and Christmas and 30s and. Uh, well, for whatever you need tutorials up, because every shop Everything. needs a new quilt, you know. And then even the outside edge, I did light. Um, I did a, a piano key border, but they're not they're not straight strips. They're just all lighter, and so it shows up and it works, and it's just fun. But I realized one day that these are just layer cake squares, which means they can be fabric. Which means that I can put a white square on top of here and sew and all make the way half around square it triangles and cut it and make half square triangles. So then I made this little half square. Half square triangle one. Yeah. Isn't that so fun? Because that's all just little pieces of fabric that we didn't have, be you know, you didn't have this before, mm -hmm. but we all have that bin of scraps. And let me tell you, when you start digging in that bin, it never goes down. It, it just never grows. Goes down. It's <laughs> it just hangs in there and keeps it's going. It's crazy how that so happens. Anyway, this is isn't this fun? So this was about five or six of the of these of your blocks. Yeah. So now some questions. Sure, so we have a question from Lynn. She says that she inherited a project from her grandmother that wasn't finished. Uh -huh. It had a hand-sewn piece in backwards. Do you think she should take it out and fix it or keep it as is? I think I that if it, it bothers as her, um, she should fix it. But if it's, if it's like a memory of her grandmother and, and it's like, because I did a, a, a tutorial recently mm -hmm. where right smack in the middle of the quilt, there was, there was two blocks that had half square triangles that were turned. Oh, and really? It just made me love that lady even more. Remember the pink um, churn dash uh, quilt that I did? And two of them are wrong. And I'm just like, I just love that you finished this and you hand quilted it. And she had to have seen it at some point, you know. And she was like, I don't care. It's, it's going to work. It's going to yep, be fine. It's fine. You know? So it's really personal preference. That is. And just a general question, how can I better preserve the quilts that I'm wanting to keep and I'm wanting to pass on? What's the best method for preserving vintage quilts? I actually you went a to a museum in Virginia, the a National Museum, and asked them about that because I have a very old um, crazy quilt mm -hmm. uh, made, made in the 1800s, and I said, I want to build a big frame for it and put it under glass. No, that's the worst thing you can do. Uh, and so what they suggested is they said, put, just hang it. Just, just hang it and use it. Put a sleeve on all four sides so that you can change the direction if you need to. Um, but use that quilt and have it out. You know, they have big things where they lay them out on 
you know, big boards and things like that. And, and it, I just don't have that. And so it generally hangs in my studio on my wall. And I don't actually have a sleeve on it. I use pant hangers. You know, for how you... The kind that have the like two bars and they yeah. squeeze together. So they're, it's an even distribution So I have a curtain rod tension. up there and then I have the pant hangers holding it and they just hang over the curtain rod. And because I think, it's pretty fragile. I think the thing about it, like logically in my head, it's if you have something out that you look at and use regularly, if you're opening it mm -hmm. and unfolding it and airing it, that thing is gonna last longer than the thing that gets folded up and pushed in a trunk under a bed yeah. and never seen. Because you don't know if the fabric's breaking down. You don't know if the, the light is discoloring it. If you're not you know, looking at it and, and, I just and working with it. And I just heard cedar isn't great because it has oil in it. It does have oil. You know, and so. So there's, there's, I think the thing is just to kind of pay attention to what, what you're trying to preserve. Yeah. Look at it And often. you can go ask. I mean, there's museums everywhere. So, and everybody has a different take on it. But we're, again, we like to use our stuff. So what else we got? Nothing? We're good? Wow. All righty. Well, we hope you enjoyed this live from Natalie and I. Yeah. It's been fun talking to everybody. And <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right. Bye -bye, everybody. Have a great day. Happy spring.